You can have mine when I'm done. Have you ever been to Waffle House? Of course I've been to Waffle House. You plan on going one soon, again? What? You plan to go to one last one yeah, soon? Yeah, I'm gonna buy a coffee cup right Yeah, now. when you leave, say, hey, can I get a coffee cup yeah. to put in my RV? And then we can, you can write R on yours, so you know it's yours. <laughs> Why don't you just put your mouth under it and we just dribble it straight in? <laughs> Slow, uh, <laughs> there you go, dude. Do it. Hi, Rex. Do it. Trying to be famous here? No f***ing star. Yes. They don't yes. want you on the camera, dude. Do you I understand this? I want to be on the camera. You know what I want to make? I want to make a, a cup of coffee in my rig. This camera in doesn't... In the morning. So I get a little caffeine in my body. I'm sorry. Sorry. Sorry to f***ing... Sorry to f***ing... Sorry to f***ing... Sorry I'm just trying to get your shot done, dude. Simple, simple. We've been trying all weekend. We had a whole list. We were about to spend like maybe $350 to have all the little you need in your RV. No! You don't need that! Well, I got a coffee cup. In 2020, the Indian Challenger officially became the king of the baggers. These are the stories of three teams and riders prepared to defend the crown. Sending it. It's an ideology about pushing beyond limits, about stiff arming fear and doubt and hurtling headfirst into the dark heart of risk. Pull it off or fail miserably it's simply the willingness to send it that matters most. For the crew at Roland Sands Design, sending it isn't just an ideology, it's a lifestyle. It's even a business model marked by grand schemes, crazy dreams, and oftentimes dancing on the brink of disaster. I would tell you that there is a level of insanity that permeates what we do. It takes a team of people that are willing to move in that chaos to make that stuff happen. This is a short life. The Grim Reaper has got a 100% success rate. So we only have so much time to get what we want to get done in this life. We take things really far and we do it to ourselves. I'd say that's with everything from events to apparel, to bike builds, to product ideas. I don't know, I think we just put ourselves out of our comfort zone. The main goal is just to get it done. We're all going the same place. Whether it's building radical customs, designing riding apparel, producing over-the-top events, or racing 600-pound baggers at Laguna Sega. The team at Roland Sands Design is always sending it, pushing their limits and exploring new, creative, and competitive terrain. This year, RSD will be one of three teams defending the crown for Indian Motorcycle in the 2021 King of the Baggers series. We went racing in the middle of the pandemic, which is crazy. We were doing the craziest thing you could think of, which was go and literally race the biggest street bikes we could find. Ended up looping the bike out and smashing myself and getting pretty hurt. He dumped a 600 pound motorcycle on top of himself and the handlebars like axed him on top of his legs and it was terrible. Frankie got right back up, literally walked it off. Kid's got a lot of heart. You know, we had a lot against us, not having Cameron there and limited testing and crashing and the guys put the bike together overnight. And we pulled off a podium and I think that's important. That felt like more of a win than probably any win I've ever had. In its effort to defend the crown in 2021, the RSD team will be armed with the ultimate American performance bagger, the Indian Challenger. I think Indian Challenger is a really good platform. It's a wolf in sheep's clothing. We went to Laguna and Tyler and I showed up to a knife fight with fully automatic machine guns. I rode the thing about a mile and was like, this is nuts. This is, this is not like any other bagger I've ever ridden. It's way more rigid, it's not moving around, it's got all these electronics, the ergonomics on the thing. I mean, it's not what you'd expect out of a, out of a cruiser. It is a performance bagger off the showroom floor. To truly understand the RSD DNA, look no further than its founder and namesake, Roland Sands, a sender of the highest order with the medical history to prove it. Think of him as the motorcycle industry's version of P.T. Barnum, always dreaming of what's next, always challenging convention, a human collision of creativity and old school ingenuity. If I see something I like, it sticks. And then I can take what I see and apply that to what I'm creating, you know? The, for me, the, the best design always rises to the top in my history. 
I don't think about it a lot as much as I just feed from it. It's kind of there, you know, like it's been a well I've been able to draw from. The thing that makes Roland special, he doesn't see any boundaries, any barriers. He stays like high level dreamer. Anytime I have some little hesitation, I'm like, hey dude, maybe we should like cut that from the thing that we're trying to accomplish. And he's like, no, dude, we gotta do it because it's gonna be sick. And then, oh, you know what we should do? And then he starts adding and you're just like, dude, stop. But then the whole time I'm like, you're right. That's rad. Born into a world of welds and wrenches, Sand's path was charted from an early age, from his father's aftermarket parts business to the breakneck speeds and at times broken bones of professional road racing. I grew up in a motorcycle shop since I was five years old, you know, crawling around the ground eating metal chips and, you know, started slowly learning the, the ropes, you know, deburring parts, assembling stuff, learn how to put together everything in the shop. Then moved from that knowledge base into designing product and I was like the chief of design for my dad's company for a long time. When I was 19 years old, my dad got me as a birthday present, a ticket to go ride with Keith Coat Superbike School out at Big Willow. When did the track school, did fairly well. You know, I was the fastest dude in the class and then did my first road race, won my first road race. And then from then on, it was just like, that's all I wanted to do in my life. In the 90s, when custom motorcycles were experiencing a renaissance, Sands changed the game. Amidst a sea of stretched and slammed choppers, better suited for showroom displays than actually riding, Sands flipped the script with racing-inspired V-Twin customs that were just as home on the track as they were on a pedestal. His success as a builder provided the platform to explore a broader range of pursuits with RSD, from performance accessories and premium riding apparel to festivals and a racing series, and most recently, bagger racing. Bringing this like hype, it's reminiscent of hooligan racing in, in the sense of like, it's wrong. It's so wrong, it's right, you know, and, and bringing that spirit to American road racing. There's like a new energy in the space. For the second straight year, the man aboard the RSD Indian Challenger will be Frankie Garcia. There's an inherent irony to Frankie Garcia. He's by no means the prototypical road racer. In a sport requiring intensive conditioning and typically lean, wiry physiques, Garcia is, well, different. In fact, it would be easy for one to assume he's the mechanic. But make no mistake, when he pulls his visor down, Frankie is all business. A highly skilled technician dead set on taking down the competition and putting it on top of the box. You know, working out's never been my thing. I'm, I'm naturally like this thick, chunky kid, you know, I like never lost my baby fat. There's an athlete somewhere in here. You race? And he goes, and I go, yeah, yeah, like, what do you mean? Like, he goes, you're just, you're more round than I thought you would be. From the moment Frankie came out and won Moto Beach like three years ago and won that race, and that was against like heavy dudes on, on hooligan bikes. He just came out, built a bike in his garage, and he came out and won the thing. And I was like, Frankie's the real deal. He gets the bit in his teeth and he sends. He's not scared to go out and ride. And he's just one of those guys who I think is very versatile. And you see him in the pits too. He's just a goofy, funny, fun time haver, always joking, wants to listen to rap music and party, dude and just keep it all light and just have fun. He puts the helmet on, and I don't think he is that person with his helmet on. I think he's a killer. The nicest dudes, the friendliest dudes in the pits, you don't want to race next to them. The nice guys that don't get rubbed off by like the dumb little shit. The guys that aren't bothered by, nah, whatever, water for ducks back, dude, Ooh, cheers, you know? That guy, that guy's gonna kick your ass with a helmet on. Like many racers, the financial prospects of riding motorcycles are limited, and day jobs are usually required. For Garcia, racing may never be his career, but it will always be his lifestyle, thanks to a childhood where family bonds were forged on the dirt tracks and trails of Central California. I was born in Salinas, California, in the Central Coast. Grew up about 15 minutes south of there in Gonzales, California, a little small farming town. I learned how to ride a motorcycle right there in town, across the street from the Dairy Queen, in the fields. Like, that's where we learned how to ride. My dad grew up racing and, and he rode a mini bike around Gonzales, California. He lived there his whole life. Yeah, when I was one for my first birthday, mom and dad got me a PW50 and by two I was riding with training wheels and you know by four we were already going to the races. We were racing flat track and you know I was born into this. You know, that's what mom and dad took me to do on the weekends. We didn't go to Disneyland, we didn't sit around and mow the lawns on Saturdays. Like we went motorcycle racing. Last year's King of the Baggers could not have come at a better time for Garcia. It took place in October, 
shortly after a sudden and profound family tragedy, and it provided a much needed outlet for inspiration and an entirely different level of motivation. On July 15th, 2020, I woke up in the morning and, and went to work. I got out of the shower and, you know, I, it's like every day. We're literally, I'm walking out, he's walking, hey, what's up, good morning, dude. Like, it didn't happen that morning. And uh, I went to work and 7.45, you know, my mom's calling and she's hysterical and, and I already knew. My brother had a, had a surgery to fix his shoulder years back and he got addicted to pain pills and we got him into rehab and, and he did all the right things and took all the right steps and, and he was actually doing really well and he relapsed. My brother is my best friend. We Like I said earlier, we did everything together. We grew up racing motorcycles together. Everything I did, he did. It's been a rough ride. Like it's been the toughest thing that's, that's ever happened to me, losing him. It's a lot of motivation like to finish that race after crashing was because I wanted to race for him. Any other time in my life, I wouldn't, I would have pulled the pin. I would have been done. But, you know, we were running the number 14 that weekend. That was my brother's racing number. And I had to go do it for him. You know, that, that made me feel better. Powered by his brother's enduring memory and inspiration, Garcia enters the 2021 season intent on not only defending the crown for Indian Motorcycle, but winning it outright. The motivation for the RSD team is stronger than ever. We knew that Harley was going to come in hot, you know, after what we did to him at the first race last year, and we're here to fight fire with fire. But the Indian Challenger won't be the only advantage. This time around, there will be a welcome presence in the pits in crew chief and mechanic Cameron Brewer. Major neck surgery put him out of commission for last October's race. But this year, he's back. I broke my neck uh, really bad desert racing in 2001, racing National Hare and Hound. Don't know what happened. My transmission locked up. I don't remember the whole day. Sometimes memories just get deleted because you don't need to know them. It was that bad, maybe. It was. I broke uh, C4, 5, and 6 compression fracture to uh, the front of my cervical spine. Brewer is the unsung hero of RSD, the ying to Roland Sands Yang, the fixer behind the scenes who often keeps the train on the rails when things start getting out of control. Cam's got racecraft. You know, he knows what it takes to put a bike on the box and, you know, how to deal with things when things don't go quite your way, which happens all the time in racing. And that's the one thing that anyone who hasn't spent time in a race pits has to understand is like, you get thrown curveballs constantly and you, you gotta deal with them and you gotta try and keep your rider happy and comfortable. And Cam knows how to do that. Motors, motorcycles, and the not so fine art of sending it were a family affair in the Brewer house. The former off-road racing national champion has spent a lifetime in the ongoing pursuit of speed. I was born in Mission Viejo, Orange County kid in the 80s. All of our neighbors, all friends with one another. My dad worked as an R&D guy for Kawasaki. So I grew up in this motorcycle, motorsports family. I went to every type of race and my dad then moved into watercraft, working for uh, Suzuki. So then I was around boats and jet skis and like whole, all of it, all right, and I loved it. I was just, I want to see all of it. Because I just like racing and I like things that are fun and creative. Like what we're doing right now, bagger racing. When everybody's kind of like, that's lame, why, that's not, why would you do that? There's a better thing for that. No, this is cool. Come Sunday, it's all about defending the crown and the RSD team is in full race day mode, making last minute adjustments to the Indian Challenger. Practice and qualifying times consistently improved for Garcia as he became more and more familiar with the twists and turns of Road Atlanta. He starts the main event from the third position. Just over his shoulder, he finds special motivation in Vance and Hines rider, Hayden Gillum. Gillum got the best of Garcia at the inaugural race at Laguna Seca, finishing second to Garcia's third. I saw Hayden Gillum on the, on the starting line. I knew he was gonna be a threat today. Uh, you know, got off to a good start and went into turn one and second and hammered down and, and rode our own race and kept it going until uh, last lap. I missed a downshift, came out of a corner and I knew that back straightaway was gonna be my best friend getting in the draft and, and uh, that's exactly what we did. Got in the draft, got right by him and brought her home. So third place, we'll take it. For many riders and race teams, Putting it on the podium is cause for celebration. But for the RSD team, a third place finish simply means coming up short. With two rounds left in the 2021 King of the Baggers series, 
there's still work to be done for the RSD crew. It was a challenge for sure coming out here. I mean, this is a wild track, and for Frankie, who's never been on this racetrack before, he had a tremendous amount to learn in a short amount of time. So I'm pretty happy to be finishing on the box, you know? We might have got a little help. Um, Hayden Gillum, I mean, he had, a, he had a rough weekend. He didn't get to spend too much time on the bike, but then to have him breathing down Frankie's neck, push Frankie a little bit. Frankie had to had to pick it up there at the end. I think uh, Hayden actually even got by him for a bit, but then Frankie was able to get back by him. So he really had to earn it. So I think that makes him feel good. And then to have Tyler blow a chain on the on the cool down lap and Frankie just rolled by and picked him up and brought him into the winner circle, man. Like there's no there's no cooler way for two homies who are who are racing like this, a similar bike to show up on the podium, both deserving of the position. That's cool. But for the ever-optimistic Frankie Garcia, bright sides and gratitude are ever-present. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got this thing? I go to work five days a week, and on the weekends, uh, you can find me on the podium on Fox Sports 1, so it's, it's not that bad of a gig. So uh, we're having a great time. This is awesome. Another challenge is faced. Another wild journey comes to an end. It's all in a day's work for the crew at Roland Sands Design and they'll do it again in round two at Road America. But win or lose, make no mistake, they will be sending. Oh,